Hiya. You find me today in Church Street, right opposite Hope Lodge. Hope Lodge was a charitable organisation in Victorian times, as was another building down here, just down there, right opposite the Constitutional Club here, is a building we've done a video about before. It was a maternity home. That's two charities, two charitable organisations. Victorian era really was the age of the philanthropist. People gave money to help the poor and charity was a big thing for the Victorians. Coggeshall has a connection with charitable organisations and we're just going to go down to a place I want to show you quickly. We've done a video on this man. The name Henry Doubleday, does that ring any bells? If you've ever posted letters and lick stamps, you've got him and his ideas to thank for. I've done a video on that. But Henry Doubleday is one of the notable people in Coggeshall. And he's left a town with a wonderful legacy. This is what's left of an area that was occupied by the Dragon Inn and Double Day's Groceries. In 1958, a horticulturalist by the name of Lawrence Hills was so inspired by Henry Doubleday, Henry Doubleday's uh, horticultural work that he created a charity called the Henry Doubleday Research Association. In the 1960s that charity really grew and it was our own king who was then the Prince of Wales in 1988 he was the patron of the Henry Doubleday Research Association. The charity has since changed its name. I think it's called Garden Organic. If I'm wrong, I'll put it down there. But it's still, as far as I know, in 2023, still active. In the UK, we have over 168,850 charities. This is the legacy that's come up from uh, the Victorian times of charitable giving. Philanthropists giving money. What has that got to do with your video, David? Well. I'm going to show you something. On the corner here, this is this is where the Double Day Grocery Store was, where Henry done a load of his work, and right here we have a charity. Double Day Corner, we have charity still in action in the form of St Helena Hospice. Helping local people facing curable illness and bereavement. Who doesn't like a good charity shop? where you get good stuff. 
and I mean good stuff. I've not bought anything really nasty or bad from from any of their charity shops. I've well, look at my clothing. I mean. <laughs> We'll look if you're on the mar in the market for some of this stuff. Look at this. We're going to have a look in. We're going to have a look inside. We'll go inside, and uh, we'll be quiet. We're allowed to film in here. Completely blind and style caps. That'll keep the argument going, that one. I'll have a grandson who likes to come here sometimes. This is their branded Christmas cards. I'll come away with a pack of these for myself, I think. These are nice. Here we go, look at this. I'll say no more. Balanced diet is a cake in each hand. That's right, and that when you walk in the tightrope of life, you need to balance. Currently in England, we've got a, a cost of living crisis, and places like this are a godsend when you need stuff. Like I say, there's no shame in charity shops. Charity shops are a way of getting a bargain, and also if you've got some stuff that you you're not using anymore. You don't really want to put them up on eBay. You'd rather they go somewhere where they can make a make a difference. And this makes a difference in the town. I've got no shame shopping in a charity shop. Mm -hmm.